What's up guys? Welcome to week number two of this little rambly series where I just get to talk about cool stuff that's happening in the world of magic and happening with our channel. Uh, I have a few things I want to mention obviously this week and so I think uh, this is going to start becoming a normal weekly thing. It seems like it will be so hopefully you guys enjoy it. We've already had some good feedback but uh, it's easy for us to record. We just sit down record it um, and then send it out to you guys. So hopefully you enjoy it but First thing on the list, uh, pre-release for Dominaria, which came out and started last week. Um, hopefully you guys got to go play in the pre-release. Unfortunately, I did not, but uh, Will and I did our normal thing where we actually get a box of uh, a brand new set, basically split it in half and do sort of a giant sealed pool. Uh, and that lets us play with some of the, the better cards in the set and actually just kind of build halfway reasonable decks, I guess. Um, but we actually get to go through and kind of play out what it would be like if we were in a giant sealed pool. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I will say we talked about it in the last podcast episode that went up yesterday. So you can check it out in more detail there. But uh, basically, I was a white-blue kind of historic deck, uh, which is awesome. Um, it seems to me that the white-blue deck is coming up on top most of the time in a limited format. So... Uh, I've watched a lot of the sealed games that a lot of people are doing on Magic Online. I've also watched uh, Kenji's draft, Numat the Nummy, um, and he he did really, really well with, uh, with some decks there. So um, definitely sweet, definitely a powerful format. Um, I will say very quickly, too, Will did play a mono blue kind of uh, stall tempo deck. Uh, we played three or four games, I believe, and he won one, I won the rest. I don't know if it was three or four, but anyway... Um, format was really sweet. I am really excited for Dominaria, actually. Uh, this is the first standard set that I've really been kind of excited about for a long time. Um, I was excited about Return to Ravnica back in the day. Uh, that was a really fun set. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, in, in light of the original Ravnica, it just didn't really hold up. A uh, lot of fun and, and limited, but just after the fact, there wasn't much there. So... Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about Dominaria. It's a really good set. Um, and to segue a little bit, we are actually seeing Dominaria now in MTG Arena for anybody who has a beta key, uh, which we do actually. We just haven't streamed or done any gameplay of it. If that's something you guys want to see, let us know because uh, we can actually prioritize that a little bit higher. But um, it's really, really fun, actually. I was a little, like unsure about it to be honest when it first came out uh and when we first kind of saw spoilers of it and things like that i just wasn't really sure it looked a lot like hearthstone and it still is a lot like hearthstone but it's a better game in my opinion so it makes it more fun i've actually enjoyed playing it a lot uh and i have played it a good bit usually for half an hour to an hour every day after work i'll come home and um play a few matches and stuff like that so Excuse me. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. If you can get your hands on a beta key, I would definitely suggest at least giving it a shot. It's free to play. Uh, you get some packs upon uh, logging in and things like that. And now with Dominaria out, hopefully it's going to be an even better experience. So I'm excited about that. Uh, hopefully you guys are too. On top of that with MTG Arena, we are seeing something really, really big, which is code cards. Uh, for packs and stuff like that in um, specifically New Zealand. They're actually starting it there, uh, sort of a regional testing to get bugs out and that sort of a thing, which I'm totally fine with. Um, and I think it makes sense that they're testing it first instead of just opening it up. There could be a lot of bugs and they just want to make sure that that's all squared away. So I'm excited about this. Uh, it's very, very likely that by the time MTG Arena hits alpha, um, we'll actually all have access to these code cards, which I can't wait for. I think um, hopefully in the core set coming out over the summer, we'll actually see this start. Uh, I think that's a good time to start it because it's a core set, gives some little spice to it. Hopefully it'll sell the set a little better. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about it. I think it's great that they're doing that. Um, obviously uh, other TCGs like Pokemon have already been doing this and it works very, very well for them. Uh, I think it's not only good value and it's just a good customer experience, um, but it just adds so much value to just a pack that it's okay to then go pick up a pack because you're not only getting the cards that you would normally get, but you're also getting some on online uh, advantage. So I really like it. I'm excited about this, and I do hope that they start implementing that very, very soon uh, all over the world because I would love to get my hands on some of that. So 
really excited. Um, the last big piece of news uh, is actually regarding Dryad Arbor. Uh, if you know what that card is, it's a land, it's a forest, but it's also a creature. It's a 1-1 one -one for uh, nothing, it's just a land. Um, there's been an issue over the past few months. I say the past few months, it's actually been around for a long time, but uh, specifically Marshall Sutcliffe has brought this up, as well as a few others, that the From the Vault Dryad Arbor looks way too much like just a normal forest, and therefore people thought, well, should it be banned, just that version, or um, you know, should there, should there be some sort of ruling on making sure that games aren't thrown just due to neglect, thinking it's just a forest or something along those lines. So, uh, finally, we do have a response, and basically what it amounts to is, if you are on coverage at a GP or a Pro Tour or anything like that that's live streamed, uh, you will have to put your Dryad Arbor in front with your creatures, not back with your lands. If you do put it back with your lands, that's actually a punishable offense, and I don't know as far as like what they'll actually do, uh, if it's just like a warning or like a match or a game loss or something like that, I don't know. Um, but that will be a punishable offense from now on as long as you are on stream. What that means if you are off stream is that it's really up to you and your opponent. Um, if, if they claim that it's a problem, then you have to kind of go with it. So it's, I don't know, it makes sense to me, uh, to be honest, because I know a lot of people, even pro players, were missing it. It was it was kind of a silly thing where it was like, okay, I'm throwing a game simply because I didn't know or I didn't pay attention to that. And yes, you can very easily argue that especially a pro player should know what's on the field, and I agree. Um, but I do think, you know, there's some merit to this. I think it's kind of silly that certain players will lose a game over something so trivial. So I'm okay with doing this. I don't know if, like, as long as the offense isn't anything too crazy, I think it's fine. Um, this doesn't also, it doesn't just apply to Dryad Arbor. Uh, Poison Counters, City's Blessing, and other uh, sort of token stuff, all of that has to be visible uh, into its own little slot. So, interesting ruling, I guess. <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts on this one. I think it's kind of interesting, the way that they're taking this. But, again, I think it, it has some merit, so I'm fine with that. Um, that's really the big piece of news for this week. I do just want to say, as far as it resolves and the channel itself goes, um, we are pre-recording a lot of stuff this week because by the time this goes up this, this coming weekend, um, I will be in Atlanta, which is not my normal home. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually visiting some friends down there and things like that. So I will be busy most of the weekend, meaning we're going to try and get ahead uh, for next week's videos. So if things are a little off kilter next week, I do apologize. We're going to do our best to keep everything on track. Uh, we do have some plans also with Tyler from Burst of Knowledge. Uh, you've got, you guys have heard us talk about him hopefully a good bit recently. Uh, we even had him on a podcast episode. So if you want to see that, by all means, check him out. Um, he is our new partner. We're working with him to build some content for both channels. Uh, we've got a few ideas in mind, and I believe next weekend-ish... Uh, we're going to actually start trying to shoot some of that. So, should be a lot of fun. Hopefully a lot of cool stuff coming your way. Uh, that's really the plan. I do also want to point out, if you've been keeping track of our video count over the last couple weeks, you'll have noticed that it's gone up substantially. <laughs> um, I think this past week we had like seven videos go up. Uh, I think this week we're at, we'll be at six. And I think six is going to be our norm. Um, unless there's a box opening video or something like that. Uh, the the normal schedule now calls for six videos a week, which is a lot. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, that takes a lot of time, which is fine. It's a lot of fun to make these videos. We enjoy it. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. That's really the goal. Um, but it does take a lot of our time, and so we're doing our best to keep that schedule up. Uh, we've got three crack packs a week. We've got the podcast. That was kind of the schedule before. On top of that, we are adding uh, deck techs every Tuesday, and then obviously this little weekly ramble coming out on Thursday, which is easy to record, so it's really not that big of a deal, but all of it together does equal up to a lot of work, so we're going to do our best to keep up with at least six videos a week for you guys. Um, it's good for us because it also keeps us relevant as far as the YouTube algorithm goes, but um, 
it's also hopefully just useful material for you guys. That's really the, the goal. So if you do have any suggestions on things that you feel like we could be doing better or anything like that, we are always open to them. Make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, but with that, I think that's going to wrap up this little weekly ramble, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will be back next week, of course, with another weekly ramble. But until then, uh, I'm going to get out of here. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date Excuse me, with all of our upcoming content, of which there is a ton. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. But with that, I'm out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.